in the grim darkness of the far future, there's like uh, a few good games and some pretty bad ones. If you're a 40k fan and also a gamer, you will probably be familiar with the absolute amount of 40k games we get, and also how most of them are ranging from mediocre to acceptable. Well, I played some of them. The worst ones, according to Steam reviews. So, how am I going about this? To qualify for this, the game must have a mixed or below as average for Steam reviews. Anything over that? mostly positive, very positive, etc. I will not consider it a bad game because clearly a majority of people that tried it at least kinda liked it. And also because I would be here forever. I wouldn't consider what I'm doing as reviews, more like first impressions. Bad first impressions. Also, if you're a 40k gamer fan, you can probably predict what I will be doing in this video. Yeah, you guessed it, a lot of turn-based combat. Before I begin, I want to make a couple of things clear. The first one is that I do not usually enjoy turn-based combat in games. But that will not be affecting my opinion, or at least I will try not to let that happen. And as evidence for that, I have Warhammer 40k Mechanicus, a game that I played quite a bit, a game I consider excellent, and to this date, one of only two games in my large Steam library with every achievement unlocked. So yeah, when the game is good, turn-based combat is very much not an issue. The other thing I wanted to mention is that video games are artistic endeavors just like any other. A project that involves the collaboration of several people, sometimes hundreds of people, most of them with a particular set of skills. Add to that whoever funds the project, they might have their own ideas and agendas, some of that classic corporate meddling, you name it. What I mean to say by this is that I'm not a game developer, I'm just a dude making videos. So yeah, some of these games might be bad, but maybe whoever designed them tried to do the best they could with the time and resources available, and in the end the result is a negative reception by the fans. This does not mean the people who made these were not probably very talented, and only had little resources or a misguided vision, or little time, you never know. I myself am writing this script knowing full well that I might put a lot of effort in this video and people might not like it, or worse, people just won't care. <laughs> On a similar note, if you enjoy one or more of these games, I invite you to go down to the comments and explain to me, in the nicer words you are able to muster, why you actually like them. Who knows, I might be approaching them the wrong way or something. I am very much not judging anyone. I know what it's like to love a franchise, but only have mediocre ways to enjoy it. Trust me, I play Ubisoft games. The cart is reporting. The site has been secured. We have a I've detected an unusual sound. First up, if we go from best to worst, is re Regicide. Regicide? Regicide? Grimdark Chess. Regicide is the name for chess in the 40k universe. This game is basically that, but with its own spin on things. You will fall! In chess, you have your pieces. In Regicide, you have your pieces, and they each have their pieces. This game has a strong presentation, good kill animations, no, Detailed models, good voice acting. The psychic disturbance is growing stronger, more focused. It's jamming our signals. Throne curse these orcs! We must complete our mission quickly so that we may reinforce Theron. Great music. So what's wrong? Well, it's chess. Don't get me wrong, I'm not about to trash a centuries old game. It's just that there's not much to it. In Regicide, movement is just like chess. Pieces can be captured just like in chess. But each turn after moving a piece, the player can use action points to perform, well, actions. Such as buffs, heals, grenades or simply firing weapons. Distance to a target makes your pieces more or less accurate and being next to a piece allows for a more close quarters action that does more damage. 
Each piece has its own stats of health and armor, etc. If health reaches zero, the piece dies just as if it was captured in a normal game of chess. This is somewhat hard to get used to. At first, you might think that knowing how chess works would give you an advantage over someone who has never played it, but I'm pretty sure, at least in my case, it was detrimental. In chess, you might get a piece in the middle of the enemy formation, and it will be safe as long as it stays out of the movement range of other pieces. In Regicide, enemies can just turn around and shoot you in the back. This ends up making otherwise important pieces like the Librarian way less powerful than in chess, since you also have to protect it from ranged attacks as well as captures. Conversely, a firing line of tactical marines, them being your pawns, can whittle down any piece within range quite effectively. Now, I'm not great at chess, I never was. Here, I now only have to play chess, I have to play chess while being shot at. This makes me a little insecure when it comes to criticizing the gameplay, as my enjoyment might depend a bit on not being good at it. It's hard to explain, but I found it nearly impossible to merge both mechanics into one stream of tactical thinking. For example, I would assemble a great firing line like I would in Mechanicus or XCOM, and realize one of my pieces was within range of one of theirs. On the other hand, I might be preparing a nice chess ambush only for one of my pieces to be shot to... well, pieces. I usually don't mind the challenge, but it was just not enjoyably challenging. The campaign in particular was a struggle. I played two out of the three acts and had to stop when I realized things were not gonna get any better. The objectives are limiting, the maps are dull and repetitive, and the story, while greatly acted, is nothing more than character speaking. I actually think I wouldn't mind playing the whole thing, even with the gameplay being space chess, if we had some cool cutscenes or something to tell the tale. There's an org campaign, but you either have to grind or pay for it. I also wouldn't mind playing this game for some time if we have some more factions. It would be cool to see how they represent the different chess pieces and their attacks with, say, the Tyranids or the Eldar, but the game only has Space Marines versus Orcs. You can choose the color scheme of your faction, but some of these also have to be either purchased or unlocked. I guess the easy thing to say is that if you like chess and 40k, then this is very much for you. I was surprised by the presentation, but the more I played it, the less fun I had. Also, no Imperial Fist color scheme. 0 out of 10. I am now... angry. Our next game on the list is a mobile game port. We are the sons of Rust, and every traitor and heretic shall feel the fangs of the wolf. On the darkest night we come, the Sky Warriors are Fenris, ready for the final battle for the Wolf Time. So, Warhammer 40k Space Wolf. This game has three features that from the get-go told me I wasn't going to enjoy this. Turn-based combat, card-based combat, and Space Wolves. I wanted to start by saying things I liked about the game, but honestly I can't think of any. I like the blood effects, I guess. Since this is a mobile port, I don't know how much I can fault the presentation, but it's pretty bad. Character models look okay, I guess, but environments look ugly and repetitive, the music is bad and constantly repeats the same tune. It has no voice acting whatsoever, with the story being told through dialogue boxes. And the sound effects. My favorite sound effect in all 40k gaming is the plasma cannon of the Devastator Marines in Dawn of War 2. Just listen to this. This is the Space Wolf version. Emperor protect us. Far from the looks being the only bad thing, the game also has terrible gameplay. There is no overall strategy, only how you play the cards you are dealt, literally. It works like this, you have three decks of cards, each pertaining to a type of space marine armor you can choose before every mission, scout, power and terminator. Of these 30 cards, a few will be given to a character at the start of their turn. The game has no movement or action phase, it's just the cards. A card might be a bolter or a plasma pistol, but you also have the option to move with it. After this, the card is considered used. Some cards are only character actions like move or buff or heal yourself. The system is based on RNG so you can get a hand dealt to you that it's only movement cards. So you know that for that turn you can't damage enemies, you are forced to either wait or move somewhere. After you move you need to select where you want to face. This will affect the direction of your attacks. As you can probably guess this is also poorly implemented. Moving through the map triggers more enemy spawns but these are not necessarily in front of you, which makes the whole selecting where to face even more frustrating. The card system also leads to your characters being sort of a jack of all trades. If you start off as a tactical marine but you use a jump pack card, for that turn you're an assault marine. You might get a heavy bolter that turns you into a devastator. I know it's strange to talk about suspension of disbelief in a setting as ridiculous as 40k. Get off my ships, 
fights, Marine! But to me, the way they pull items from their pockets like a GTA character just looks stupid. Not to mention that your character seemingly throws away the weapon he just used. Not 100% sure on this, but I guess the whole card system on mobile was based around purchasing card packs. On PC, you seemingly grind for them, with the added option to craft them as well. This is like 90% of the appeal of the game. If you like opening card packs and revealing them one by one with the hopes of getting a rare one, this could be up your alley. To me, it was just boring and uninteresting to play. No real strategy since you depend on the RNG of the cards, and even when the RNG is good, the combat is just not engaging. Next up is another mobile game. However, I am pleased to say that I do have a couple of nice things to say about this one. Death Watch Enhanced Edition is a more classic tactical turn-based game. You have your turn with 4 action points. You can move at a point per square or you can attack. Your marines can be set to overwatch an area and the ones carrying melee weapons will counterattack enemies that damage them. These things I just mentioned make it immediately more engaging than Space Wolf. Here you can at least plan for enemies approaching and set up firing lines or kill boxes. For those who don't know, the Death Watch is sort of like a Special Forces chapter of Space Marines. They take veterans from other chapters and serve the Ordo Xenos arm of the Inquisition. This reflects on the game as being able to have squads composed of Blood Angels or Ultramarines or Space Wolves. During missions your characters will talk and quip, and they all seemingly say things related to their respective chapter. Blood Angel, you are acting troubled. The Red Thirst is on me. The condition is unfamiliar to me. But if your thirst is for the death of the Xenos, then by all means, go and quench it. They do repeat themselves, but it's a nice little detail. The game also has good sound effects for the most part. For the most part. Termagants sound like blow darts. It also has a really engaging progression system that allows you to equip and level up your squad in between missions. The way it works is that you accumulate XP which can then be used to level up or unlock traits. Some traits might require you to save up some XP before acquiring them. However, if a marine dies in a mission, they're not really dead but they lose all their unspent XP. It's an interesting risk reward system, if a bit grindy at times. Equipment is acquired by mission drops or by purchasing packs of them with these. I forgot what they're called. Inquisidollars? Here you can also see where the microtransactions were in the mobile version, but just like in Space Wolf, they've all been replaced with the grind. And that's about it. If I made it sound like this game is good, I'm sorry, but we have to trash it a bit now. On the presentation side, the game is pretty ugly. I'm not just talking about graphic quality, I'm talking about how dark the game is. Every single level is a poorly illuminated series of corridors. This is accentuated by the exclusively top-down camera. You can zoom in and out, but no changes in angle are allowed. Both Regicide and Space Wolf sometimes switch to a cinematic style when killing enemies. Not here, and the result is rather boring. The music is mostly all ambience. It doesn't have any punch or action triggers. Look at what happens when you complete a mission. The sound just continues. You can even still hear the surviving Tyranids. It all has an unfinished quality to it. The main menu has a pretty cool track, but I don't think it fits the game at all. This is not the sound of the grim darkness of the far future. This is Mass Effect, or Star Trek. The UI is just straight up ugly and also looks unfinished. There's very little info during gameplay. Remember the character traits and skills I mentioned? Well, you better write down or remember what each icon means because there's no way to check their emissions. Then there's a progression issue. You not only get weapons and tools, you can also get characters. Just like the items, top tier marines have more traits and abilities. And with the amount of XP necessary to level up one character, it kinda sucks for example grinding a tactical marine's unlocks, then getting a cooler, more special tactical marine. This one has more traits, but it's at level 1. While I did say the gameplay is better than Space Wolf, well, that's not very hard, is it? The game is still pretty boring. Some missions do scratch a tactical itch and it's pretty cool to advance corridors, having some men in Overwatch while the rest advance and then have them switch places. But the core strategy gets pretty repetitive. All in all, I would say the story, characters and progression systems are enough for me to sort of, maybe, recommend this one. If you don't mind the bland look, the perspective and the repetitiveness, there is the shadow of a good game here. Which is more than I can say for a lot of others in this video.
Space Hulk is a board game based on a 40k universe. A Space Hulk is the name given in 40k to an amalgamation of ships that got lost in the warp. Every once in a while it spits one of these out, and usually someone tries to explore them. They tend to have goodies inside, but also danger. Traditionally gene stealers, but can also be other nasty things. It's a very prominent setting in 40k. From doing battle in them, to exploring them, and sometimes even talking to them. As far as I know, there's three video game adaptations. Deathwing, has issues but it's pretty fun with friends. Ascension, apparently pretty good but can't be purchased anymore. And Tactics. Quick breakdown of how it works. You deploy your terminators with teleportation. Each turn you have action points and command points. Action points allow your terminators to move and perform actions. Command points allow you to play... cards. Each card has gameplay effects on your terminators but they can also be converted into action points in case you need some extra. Gene stealers can appear from these nest things. At first it's a blip, meaning it could be a gene stealer, it could be two or it could be zero gene stealers. You can only reveal the blips if they enter your line of sight. You can close doors, you can overwatch, you can hack turrets. The name of the game is completing the mission while not letting the Xenos get too close, because they will very reliably one hit kill your terminators. That's the basics. There are variations like different types of gene stealers and different weapons as well as different cards to choose to bring into battle. Let's comment some things. The game looks pretty good. Being composed of many ships from different races and different times, the levels are quite diverse and each place has a clear aesthetic choice. Animations are seamless and fluid. You can speed them up but I found myself not doing that just to look at them. The story also has a great setup. This Space Hulk in particular hasn't just shown up, it is also in a direct collision course with an important Forge world. So, Blood Angel Terminators are deployed to try and destroy it from within. There's an Inquisitor with a different agenda, and a Fabricator General who wants the situation taken care of quickly. Just like Regicide, it's mostly just dialogue boxes, though there are some cutscenes. The setup is also a thousand times more interesting. Progression is also good, with every mission rewarding either new items for your characters, or at the very least upgrade materials. You have the Blood Angel campaign I just mentioned, and a Gene Stealer campaign. It's pretty interesting. It has you dealing with incursions from different Space Marine chapters through the ages. The outcome of this you can discover in the Blood Angels campaign. We were deceived. There are no fallen here, only gene stealers, countless numbers of them. But the signal we detected, it dates from the Black Ages. It's a neat little detail. You can also play skirmish and community mate maps or create some yourself. In this mode you can play as other Space Marine chapters as well as the gene stealers. Your custom Terminator squad can be personalized and even painted, which almost brought tears to my eyes as I fondly remembered Dawn of War. So, what makes tactics unenjoyable? Brother, that foul Xenos is almost upon you. Destroy it! Fear not, brother. I will gun it down for Baal and the Angel. That was pretty lame, brother. It's not my fault, brother. We have been doing this for ages, literally. It's RNG, brother. What's an RNG? A greater demon of siege. It has been manipulating us since the beginning of our mission. Are you sure? It's like two feet away from you. Open fire, brother. Help me. I hate this. Me too, brother. There's a dice roll system that simulates what happens in the tabletop and decides what will be the outcome of engagements. I hate this with an insane passion. I know, I know this is an adaptation of a board game, having dice rolls just makes sense. I just can't get into it personally. When you roll dice in real life, there's an excitement and anticipation to see what you will get and how that will change your strategy. Here you take the worst aspect, the RNG, while not portraying the excitement in any way. Visually it looks dumb. Your terminator can put the barrel of a spolter in the ear of a gene stealer's and it will miss. Gameplay wise, it makes it so that you can't truly rely on any formation or tactics you apply on missions. Come to think of it, this might be why I like Mechanica so much. There's barely any RNG in it, only tactics and positioning. Some will enjoy it, maybe take it as added flavor to the missions. To me, it's just frustrating. I mean, look at Deathwing, look how cool it is being able to do this. The AI also cheats pretty bad while at the same time being pretty stupid. Gene stealers will sometimes move in front of your troops with action points still remaining and not attack. They just stand there, menacingly. Terminators can be put in overwatch mode. Maybe you see upcoming blips and decide to make the room into a kill zone. Well, the gene stealers who were happily charging into your position last turn now freeze in place. They will do so until you lose. Oh yeah, you lose. You can be methodical in your advance. Most missions have a turn limit. Reach the limit and that's it. 
mission failed. I don't understand why it is like this. I mean, I hate to bring Mechanicus again barely a moment later, but in it, the sense of urgency came from missions and overall the whole game getting harder if it took too long. Not instant mission failure. The UI is terrible. I said the Death Watch UI looks simplistic and unfinished. This one is the complete opposite, overcrowded with unnecessary info. Let's take a look at it. Starting off, this thing up here is completely unnecessary. I understand it being there on multiplayer matches with the name of each player. This is the campaign. I know I am me and I know the AI controls the enemy. Then we have this left panel here. This is your squad, who they are, the weapon they carry and the action points they have. Then we have this down here when you select one of them. Here you can see who they are, the weapons they carry and the action points they have. Oh, and in case you need to know each character, who they are, the weapon they carry and the action points they have, that info is also constantly floating next to them. You see the issue here? It's needlessly complicated. They could just have the little portraits here and have this show up when you select them. That's it, that's all the info you need. The game looks pretty good, but it feels like looking at the sunset through stained windows. All in all, this is not a terrible or unplayable game. It's just frustrating and hard to get used to. If you can stomach the dice roll based combat and the clunky UI, the story and skirmish mode could be enough to warrant a playthrough if you're a diehard fan. Foundation layers of the Underhive, all manner of treasures can still be found. Lost, forgotten, or abandoned in the dark. The only question is, who will get there first? Next up is Necromunda, Underhive Wars. I was kinda excited for this one since we are getting an FPS in about a month or so and I don't really know anything about Necromunda. To explain it briefly, big city, big crime, big hairstyles. And what is Underhive Wars? Well it's a turn based tactical combat game, duh. There's different gangs, all fighting for territory and resources in the subterranean sections of these massive cities. The campaign has you adventuring to find a source of power deep within the Underhive. Missions alternate between different characters and factions. During missions, you choose a character and so does your opponent. The character can then perform actions like moving, attacking, using tactical abilities or interacting with the environment. This goes on until each character has been used. Then it goes into the next turn. You have movement points and action points. Most skills use action points, some use movement points. There's different classes, each with their own abilities and weapons they can use. Some nice things about this game. It looks pretty good. I really like the style of each gang house as well as individuals within them. It also has the better presented story out of all the games in this video with actual cinematic cutscenes and dialogue as well as narration. Black Ash knew she was onto something juicy. Just not what or where. But Tessera was a good leader. See? She inspired loyalty, so her gang got her out despite the cost. The characters are one note for the most part, with all of them being mean and tough guys or girls. But the alternation between them and the overall adventure are pretty well constructed. There's good variety in missions. Sometimes you are ambushing, sometimes you're being ambushed. Fighting pits, where only melee weapons are allowed, and even firefights between three factions at once. I also really like that you can loot corpses and containers. It emphasizes that the fight is to the death with anything you can find. Okay, enough pleasantries. First of all, and this one is a bit of a personal nitpick, the game is just not violent enough. I mean, look at these dudes. Look at these girls. What would you assume happens when they fight each other to the death? The answer is a light sprinkle of blood and then falling to the ground. Where are the limbs being torn by chainswords? Where are the people exploding from bolter shells? Look at these rage, fallout, Mad Max looking people. Isn't it kinda strange that the game has very little blood and no gore? Characters can also be revived at any point if you have an adrenaline shot. Are they just having fun here? Pretending to fight? It's honestly a pretty strange aesthetic choice that really takes you out. Then there's the flow of the missions. There's no way to skip or speed up animations on characters. You have to watch every single movement and action play out in real time. I decided to record the game mission by mission. There's one where the objective is ambushing and killing 5 guys. The video file is almost 40 minutes long. An ambush with 5 enemies. This is made even worse by the terrible AI. You're not only watching every move play out, they are really stupid moves. Things like kneeling for cover in front of two heavily armed enemies, setting up overwatch on top of towers, melee overwatch, take extremely convoluted paths to end up basically in the same place they were, often getting stuck on things, consistently and reliably stepping on their own traps. There's been some bad AI in this video, but I'm pretty sure this one takes a cake. 
It's honestly kinda sad, because of all the turn-based combat in this list, I would say this one is the best. No dice rolls or cards, just positioning, accuracy, abilities and managing your movement and action points. If you like the style of the characters and are more or less intrigued by the story, then you might enjoy this. Just prepare a podcast or something, cause there will be a lot of watching the AI do stupid things. Eternal Crusade. This is one of the most famous fluster cucks in the history of 40k video games. I'm not gonna go too deep into the details of what happened with this game, since other people have done an excellent job already. If you want a TLDR, basically fans were promised the moon, and got, uh, cheese? I don't know how to complete the comparison. It was pretty bad. Before I give my take on this game, I think it's important to clarify that all the hype and all the disappointment surrounding it thankfully avoided me. There was a big chunk of my mid to late teens where I wasn't into 40k that much, except maybe Dawn of War 2. I don't really know why, maybe I started having sex or something. So, instead of going into this game thinking it was trash because we were promised a cool MMO, I went into this game expecting a cash grabby, free to play, battlefield style 40k game. Is it that? Well, kinda, I didn't get to play a lot of it. There just doesn't seem to be many people playing it. I did the discord thing and joined, but not a lot of enthusiasm there either. I even created a character of each race to see if the matchmaking was bad with all of them. It was. But, I gotta say, and don't hate me for this, I sort of kinda liked it? Don't get me wrong, it's pretty bad. But it was such a breath of fresh air. Being able to run around, shoot at people, get killed in melee, all in one fluid timeline, no one waiting for their turn, everyone just killing, enjoying the moment, pleasing corn. There was this one particular match, Space Marines vs Chaos. In the enemy team there were this group of raptors. If you don't know what those are, it's basically Night Lords Assault Marines, with the jump packs. And they were messing people up. I'm talking about dropping from nowhere in the middle of a squad and going to town. If you saw one of these guys and they saw you, then that's it, your time had come. But at some point we started working as a team. Pushing objectives, healing, reviving, coordinating. It felt great to see the match slowly escape the hands of the enemy, and sure enough, we won in the end. It was honestly kinda great. I wish it felt great to play it. Here's the thing, 40k as a setting works by the rule of cool, and that's what's so great about it. If Dan Abnett is writing a story where two rival Astarte squad meet up, and he wants them to get into a melee fight, then that's it, they are getting into a melee fight. If you hear that and think, Don't they basically have grenade launcher assault rifles, why get into melee? Then you don't get it. However, translating all the fighting prowess of the characters into a video game can be tricky. Dawn of War 2, for example, had a suppression mechanic. That's how your marines avoid getting fucked in melee. In Eternal Crusade, a player might have a ranged weapon and another a melee one. How do we balance this? How do we make sure the melee character doesn't consistently get torn into pieces? Well, everyone moves really fast, and lunges forward a lot when attacking. And everyone can do this, not just melee characters. So when you're reading a book, in your head you can make it look cool. In a game with each player controlling a character, it's kinda messy. So yeah, ranged combat is fine, melee is mostly fine too, but when everyone is brawling and everyone is shooting, it just looks insane. It's even harder to tell what's going on if you're playing Marines vs Chaos. Though I am an Alpha Legion Marine, so I guess it's kinda the point. Then there's the free to play aspect. When a game is free to play, and it's popular, then it's cool. Here's your skins, here's your events, go have fun. When a game is free to play and no one plays it, Things start to get crappy and developers seemingly switch from let's make this game popular to let's make this game siphon as much money from the people who already like it. I haven't played long enough to make an informed decision on whether this game is paid to win or not. But putting the option to join ongoing matches and skip matchmaking behind the premium paywall? I mean, how does this make any sense? Here's the game, it's free to play sometimes and pay us money if you want to play it whenever you want. But by far the nastiest thing is the premium bank. What is the premium bank? Well, each time you finish a match, in classic online shooter fashion you get a panel with your XP going up and you receive coins or whatever. In Eternal Crusade you receive some XP and some coins or whatever, and then a fraction is put into your premium bank. 
If you ever decide to pay for the premium experience, then you get your full rewards. What? It's just... I don't know, like... Most games do the thing when you get XP and currency boost if you're premium, sure. This is probably the same in the end, but the way to go about it. An animation plays out with part of your XP leaving your score and going to the premium bank. It's so incredibly predatory, I don't get how developers don't see how off-putting these things are. I don't really know if I can recommend this one. On one hand, it's pretty cool if everyone is on the same page and you're wrecking fools as a team. On the other, the combat itself doesn't feel or look like 40k. It's just people dashing everywhere as you put bolter rounds on your teammates. But for better or for worse, it is free. So if you're aching for some third person objective based action, you might want to check it out. Also, as expected, orcs are really fucking cool. Look at them go! Okay, I have really tried to be fair so far and give each game a good chance to dazzle me. But I can honestly say, as my own personal opinion, that Aeronautica Imperialis Flight Command is the worst game in this list. Yes, it's worse than Space Wolf. First of all, I know this is another adaptation of a board game, but just how much of an excuse is that really? When adapting something, you decide what and how to do it. Playing a board game and playing a video game are two different experiences with their pros and cons each. You might want to play a board game because all the players are there, in person, talking and having fun. At least when Nurgle wasn't messing with us. A video game tends to be more immersive, more immediate action and effects with much less left to the imagination. A thing as exciting as airplane dogfighting, why would you choose to translate that into video game form closely following the board game? Why is it turn based? Why is combat decided by dice rolls? I feel like other than card combat, this game has everything bad I've been mentioning so far. Terrible UI and AI both, ugly and poorly optimized visuals, uninteresting story that you read because there's no voice acting, boring combat, and above all, I just can't play it. My head hurts from trying to understand what's happening. The way it goes is that you tell each one of your planes what to do, and then click and turn and whatever you told them to do plays out, as well as whatever the enemy chose to do. This, by the way, plays at less than 30 FPS. This is not the worst looking game on this list, but like, come on, what's going on here? The perspective also keeps changing for no reason, I really can't tell what's going on here. Look at this. I'm really sorry. Like, I haven't completed every game on this list, but I have at least played them until it seemed like they wouldn't throw any new things at me. Usually a few hours. With this one, I just did the tutorials and I can't get past the first mission. It's unpolished, mechanically unengaging, visually unappealing, confusing and frustrating. So, this is the end. I am incredibly disappointed. I thought this video was going to consist of 8 games, not 7. You see, when I first came out with the idea for this, there was this game that I could swear had mixed overall reviews. However, now I'm playing the games and it's very positive. Maybe there's been an update or something, but I'm honestly kinda sad, I really wanted to play it. There's a negative review that says, it's very arcadey, not a flight sim. Thanks for the heads up, I was really hoping for Dacus Squadron Flyboy's Edition to be 40k's DCS. On the opposite side we have Battlefleet Gothic Armada, a game that I could also swear stood at positive reviews and now has mixed. Gothic Armada 2 is very good, so I found this pretty strange. After some light research, it would seem that an update broke the game and now it won't start for some people. It runs fine to me, but since that alone seems to be the reason it now has a mixed average, I will not include Gothic Armada in this list. And that's about it, the 7 worst 40k games on Steam. Thank you very much for watching, consider liking and... So, what's going on here? Is that Sins of the Father? Okay, let's do this. 
While I mentioned that all the hype and heartbreak surrounding Eternal Crusade had eluded me, this one hit me full on in the face. It's 2016. For 12 years, Relic Entertainment and its Stone of War franchise have been a default name you knew you could rely on when talking about 40k video games. Dawn of War 1 and its expansions were at this time already considered classics. And Dawn of War 2 successfully changed the formula while retaining the feel of the setting and the positive reception of most of the fans. Then, the trailer dropped. It was sick. Like, it had everything. Ominous narration, foreboding music, orcs collecting limbs, banshees doing parkour and shit, imperial knights, we hadn't seen those in the franchise yet, and the wraith knight just slices it in two like it's paper, and in the end, the big pile of corpses showing what's to come, with the bodies falling forming the number before the title drop. Can you blame us for getting excited? About a month later, the gameplay reveal was released and... Oh boy. But even then I was like, hey, it's okay, no biggie. I'll just ignore it and continue with my life. But now I kinda have to play it and it really sucks. I feel like I need to explain to you how rare it is for me to get upset over these things. I mean, I like stuff, but I also understand that stuff is influenced by markets and executives, publishers, you know, the whole capitalism thing. I am a Mass Effect fan. Andromeda sucked, no biggie. I'm also a Star Wars fan. The new trilogy was an absolute trash fire, no problem. I used to play every battlefield, then 5 happened and what are you gonna do? Even in 40k itself, like Primaris, Perpetuals, I really don't care all that much. But this was just so bad and most importantly so unnecessarily bad. Similar to Eternal Crusade, there's already been a really good deep dive into this so I won't get much into the technicalities and also the video is probably really long already. So here are my own personal bullet points on why this game sucks. Animations, they are terribly goofy. People have complained about the quality of the graphics, but I honestly think the visuals would have been fine if animations like combat and movement were not, well, this. When the fans said they wanted more Dawn of War 1 in the third game, they didn't mean 2004 animations. Units move and turn and control too fast. Very few things in the game have a sense of weight to them. This makes combat look ridiculous. Actually, you know what the feel of combat reminds me of? Northgard. Northgard has terrible combat, but since it isn't the entire point of the game, Northgard ends up being a pretty good game overall. Dawn of War 3 is pretty focused on combat, I would say. No more cover system. Instead, you get the domes of death. You capture them and that's it. Basically immune to range damage as long as the dome holds. I can't even begin to understand why they did this. In Dawn of War 2, the environment played such a key role in the outcome of firefights. As the match progressed, cover and buildings would be damaged or destroyed. Here, there are no buildings or anything, just the domes. Generic story for a campaign. There's a planet that comes out of the warp every once in a while, you know, like Aurelia in Chaos Rising. There's an artifact, everyone wants it, and the Eldar have a prophecy about it. It's the same disquiet I have for the prophecy. Must I remind you that the prophecy is not to your concern? My inner circle has its interpretations well in hand. Of course, Otak Kai. It sure doesn't sound ominous or dangerous. It's all so predictable. There's probably a ton of things, but I would like to end with the two things that I found more heartbreaking. First of all, the time and budget that went into this. Whether we like it or not, this is a very well-made game. You've seen the other games on this list. Some of them were trying to do something, be faithful to the setting. Imagine Necromunda or Space Hulk Tactics getting those resources, that time and advertisement budget. Imagine that money going to a Space Marine sequel. And then there's the fact that this was so unnecessary. Everyone wanted a third game. Some people like me and even younger quite literally grew up with the other two. At no point were they worried about making their money back. No, no, no. They got greedy. They thought they could get esports going. They thought it could become a sensation like Dota or League while at the same time clearly not taking as long to make the game itself. Let's face it, this game, polished as it is, clearly took way less time and effort than a worthy sequel would have taken. Just think about someone creating a map with objects and buildings instead of a dome. I really don't know how much of this is on Relic and how much on Sega. If it was Relic, well, they clearly haven't learned their lesson, seeing how they immediately went to Xbox and said, do you have any bigger shoes to fill laying around there somewhere? Okay, that's enough. Back to pretending this game didn't happen. Thank you for making it this far. 
That was pretty bad, right? Well, don't be sad. Not all is lost. Hired Gun looks pretty cool, looking forward to playing it and reviewing it. Dark Tide not only looks great, but it comes from a developer who has proven they can do this type of game already. And even though my brain knows it's probably impossible to do right, in my heart I just know that if there's a way to do it, just the smallest chance that it could be done right, Creative Assembly has to be brainstorming the shit out of a possible Total War 40k. They would have to be stupid not to even consider it, they know what it means. I know they were not actual reviews for each game and I'm sorry. I guess I could rank them. Is that not what people do here on YouTube? Ranking things? Okay, this is the official ranking. And this is a ranking if I'm being objective and not letting personal feelings get in the way. If you have to take something away as a review, think about this. Would I have played any of these games if I didn't have this little project in mind? The answer is an absolute and resounding No brother, never. Thank you so much for watching. Consider liking and subscribing for more 40k content, game reviews and other stuff. And see you next time. I have to go now. I have a squadron to join.